Hello, good people. And in this tutorial, we are going to be querying a book. What does that mean? It means that we're going to be asking questions to a 300 page book, and we're going to get answers back to us that are directly from the source that are contextually relevant from there. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use OpenAI. We're going to use Langchain, but then a really cool feature about this is we're going to use a vector store that is stored in the cloud. Meaning up until now, I've shown you, uh, we've stored our embeddings uh, locally, but in this case, we're gonna use Pinecone. And this is an external vector store that Langchain supports natively, which is gonna be really cool to see. Now, let's check out the book that we're gonna be looking at here today. It is the Field Guide to Data Science. Now, you'll notice here that this book was uh, made back in 2015. So this is when data science was still a cool term. Uh, when it was just not just coming out, but when it was relatively still new and there's a lot of really cool dense information on here And you can see uh, if we go further down, there's just a ton of really good information Let's see if we can see the last page on this book uh, 123 pages. Let's just say it's ballpark around there. So what we're going to do is I want to load up this book into Langchain using the unstructured integration that they have to read the text on this PDF. And then we're going to ingest it and do a bunch of cool uh, things with that. Um, as always, I want to start with the diagram to kind of show you what this looks like without code. And then we'll jump into the code because I think it's a little bit easier to understand here. So, oh, uh, nice. So let's, let's take a look at this here. Um, over here, we have our PDF that we're going to be ingesting. This is the field guide to data science. And then what Langchain is going to help us do is it's going to help us split this up into a bunch of documents. And you can think of documents as just pieces of text or chunks of text. And you can have these be small chunks, big chunks, whatever you'd like. We're going to use OpenAI, uh, their embedding engine, engine to change these documents into embeddings. Now, embeddings are literally just a list of numbers. Uh, you can think of it as a big fat vector. And in fact, the OpenAI engine that we're going to be using has about 1500 different numbers to represent the semantic meaning of each one of these documents, which just means uh, not what are the words say per se, but what does the document mean in this case? And the cool part about this is we're going to store it on Pinecone. So instead of you storing it within your local database on your computer, we're going to store it externally on Pinecone, so it's easy for us to retrieve later. And not only that, it'll persist sessions too. And you can actually make this database available to other people to query as well. So you can start to see how you have some shared memory about how to uh, uh, query this book here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask a simple question, like what is a data scientist? That question is gonna get turned into an embedding. We're gonna use, or a vector really, and we're gonna use OpenAI's uh, uh, engine for that. And then what Pinecone is going to help us do is it's going to say, hey, based off of the embedding that you just gave me, here are the two documents that are most important to answering that question. And technically, it's here are the two documents that are most similar to that question that you asked. So in this case, embedding one and embedding three. And then Langchain is going to help us take those two embeddings, use OpenAI and actually answer the question for us. So a data scientist is spoiler. We're going to go. We're going to go find out there. All right, so that's the diagram portion. Let's jump over to some code to see how we're actually gonna do this. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Uh, great, so up at the top, we're gonna uh, import some document loaders to start us off. And I'm gonna do the unstructured PDF loader as well as the online PDF, PDF loader just to show you how we can do this here. And then I'm gonna use the recursive text splitter in order to split up my documents. So let me go ahead and let me run this. Cool, those are loaded. And so next I'm gonna call loader equals unstructured PDF loader. Now you'll see that I'm calling from a local file here. I've uh, commented out how you can actually do this from online as well, but because this is a large book, I'm doing the local one just to speed this up a little bit. And I know from experience that, let me load this up. Uh, cool. And I was going to say, I know from experience that once I actually call the load on this, this is going to take quite some time here. So I'm going to jump ahead and pause the video so we can uh, jump to the cool part. See ya. Okay. Now we loaded up our data over here. And what I want to show here is I want to show the length of the data, um, to show what Langchain is actually loading here. <clears throat> and then I want to show, uh, 
how many characters are in uh, our first piece of data here. So if I were to run this, you can see that I only have one document and there are about 700, I mean, 176,000 characters. Now, this is way too much to be putting uh, into a prompt with OpenAI. And so the first thing that we need to do is we need to not just have one document that's huge, we wanna have a bunch of small documents broken up here. So I'm gonna use the recursive text splitter. I'm gonna set the chunk size to 1,000. You can play with this around play around with this to see what works best for you. Chunk overlap equals zero, don't need any of that. And I'm gonna pass in the data that we loaded up here. Okay, so that was pretty quick. And then let's see how many now we have. We have 228 different documents. So we went from one to 228. And if we actually wanna see what this looks like, let me just show you what it texts. Uh, in fact, let me just show you the first one. It's a document here. And you can see that we have the field guide to data science, second edition. Looks like there's some funky formatting. I don't think that this is gonna be an issue for me. Um, so if you're doing this in a professional setting, it might be a different story. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create embeddings of our documents, of these 228 documents, and get them ready for semantic uh, search. So I'm gonna import from VectorStore. I did Chroma beforehand here, just as I was messing around, but we're gonna use Pinecone today. And then we're gonna also import OpenAI embeddings. This is the, um, the model that is actually gonna take our documents and change them into uh, vectors for us. And then we're also gonna import uh, Pinecone. Go ahead and do that. Fabulous. Make sure that you have your API keys all set and ready in your environment. And then I'm gonna stage my embeddings, which is what we do right here. We just call it and we pass our OpenAI key. And then I'm also gonna do pinecone.init. Uh, so I'm gonna initialize Pinecone. And so we have, you're gonna pass your API key, you're gonna pass your environment that your Pinecone instance is in, and then you're also gonna pass your index name. Now, I called mine Langchain1 here, but what I wanted to show you is how to do this on Pinecone. It takes a couple clicks, which is why I wanted to set it up with you. So I'm gonna create my first index. This is not actually my first uh, index. I'm gonna say Langchain2. And with the OpenAI embeddings, I know that they have 1,536 different dimensions that come with it. And with regards to the metric, that we pick here. I'm gonna pick cosine for now. Um, you can play around with these and see if there's a better one uh, for your use case. Um, for the pod type, I'm gonna go faster queries. I'm on the free tier anyway. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create index here. I'm gonna take this name of Langchain2 as my index. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it into my index name over here. Uh, let's go ahead and run that. Cool, looks good. Now, um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually pass in uh, the embedding, uh, I should say, I'm gonna get the embeddings and then pass them over to Pinecone. I'm doing a couple of that, a couple of stages of those in a one-liner here. So I'm getting the texts from all my documents. I'm passing the embeddings engine that we made up above with the OpenAI engine. And then I'm gonna pass the index name. Um, sweet, all that looks good. Let's make sure that we're ready. Yes, we are. And so let's go ahead and run those up. So what this is doing right now is it's taking all those texts, it's creating embeddings about them, and it's and it's passing those up to Pinecone, which is the R external data source, which is sweet here. Now, if we were to go over here and we're gonna look at uh, metrics, there's no data for the selected range because we it still hasn't uploaded all the information that we wanted to yet. But let's see if we can get this going here. Vector count, uh, it's kind of, difficult to see, but you can see here we have 160. I, we just did this. Okay, so now you can see it's starting to populate with some data here, but basically we have as many vectors as we had documents. So we had 228 documents. We have 228 vectors here as well. Let's see if this will give us a better time here. Anyway, you can see how it went up because we just loaded those up there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to ask questions to our book. And so we're going to say, what are the examples of good data science teams? And then when we do doc search, which is the document store that we were querying beforehand, it's gonna do a similarity search. We're gonna pass it our queries and you don't have to include metadata, but I did it here just to, to, just to show it here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then what it did is it went up to Pinecone and said, hey, what are the docs that are similar to the query that we just did here? And so it passed back one, two, three, four, uh, five documents. And I believe it did five documents here. Yeah, because the similarity search by default, it will return the five documents for you. And so these are the documents from the PDF that Pinecone says have the highest cosine similarity with, um, with our question that we had there. Now, this is cool, but we wanna get this question answered to us in natural language. So I don't wanna do anything with these docs. 
or I'm not gonna do anything with those docs. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna import OpenAI. I'm gonna import the question and answer chain from LangChain. I'm gonna get my um, OpenAI ready. And then I'm gonna have the, uh, the stuff uh, chain type, which means it's gonna take all those documents, put them into the prompt, and then it's gonna uh, finally answer the team or answer the question for us. And let's go ahead and run that. So we're gonna query what are good examples of data science teams. We have our docs just like we had above. And then here's the magical part. We're gonna say chain.run and we're gonna input the docs, which are the relevant docs that we had before. And we're gonna input the query, which is the question that we answered here. And then this is the natural response that we get from OpenAI. Good data, data science teams are multidisciplinary teams of computer scientists, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Well, what if you wanted to ask a different question? Um, what This is pretty uh, kind of esoteric to the, or nuanced to the book itself. Um, so I think this would be a good question. What is the advise stage of data maturity? This might be tough if I just ask this to OpenAI in the first place, it might not know what I'm talking about. But because I'm querying straight from the book, the advice state of data maturity is when organizations can define their possible blah, 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 blah. So it answers it correctly, which is cool. I could say the collect stage. Go ahead and run that. The collect stage is focusing on collecting internal documents or external data sets. So then all of a sudden what we just did is we just asked a question to our book itself. Very, very, very cool. And you can do this across multi disciplines. So whether you have more books that you want to load up, keep in mind that it will be expensive the more data you do, or your internal documents, or if you wanted to do some sort of uh, chatbot and you wanted to get a specific question and reference some external embeddings or some other documents in there as well. Awesome. Let me know if you have any questions and please don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up this video if you want more. Thank you very much.